Ms. Mills for joining us. Um, thank you for accepting our invitation. It's a great, a huge honor for us to have you in interview. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Um, regarding all your achievement in Africa, we first of all want to congratulate you because it's, uh, it's, it's great what you've done in Africa. And I mean, it's still, it's just the beginning. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Exciting for not only myself but Kenya to qualify for Afro Basket for the first time in 28 years. So, um, congratulations to the players and everyone involved. It's um, it's great to be back at that level. Yeah. Uh, tell me, where did it all begin for you? <laughs> well, uh, growing up in Australia, where sport is like a religion, I played you know multiple different sports growing up. Um, and started watching the Women's National Basketball League, the WNBL, uh, here in Australia when I was about 10. Um, I was inspired to start playing and coaching because we had so many great female players like Lauren Jackson, Penny Taylor, you know, all these great players, as well as really strong and successful female head coaches. And so that inspired me to start playing basketball at 15. And um, I started coaching at 16. Um, and wow. uh, very young, yeah. So, wow. and um, I ended up coaching junior boys and girls teams here in Sydney and women's teams. Um, eventually, in 2011, um, my twin sister and I moved to Africa, and I've been a head coach and assistant coach for men's club teams and national teams uh, since 2011. Um, more recently, obviously, head coach of Kenya. And since 2017, I've also been a consultant for a lot of club teams and national teams throughout Africa. Okay, okay. Uh, let's remember a little bit. Let's be back in Rewind. February. Rewind. Let's be back in February. <laughs> okay. When you saw Tyler Ongwe eating the last mm -hmm. winning shot, in what mm -hmm. mood you were? Oh, look, I think that famous photo captured it pretty well. Um, we were all very excited, very <laughs> up. Um, I think the fact that um, it was 28 years since Kenya had uh, qualified for Afro, so it was huge, but to also beat a team like Angola. You, who, want, me um, to, you want me to tell you something? Yes. The last time Kenya played in Afro basket, I was the point guard of Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. Wow. <laughs> it was in 1993 in Nairobi. Yes. I was well, they qualified by hosting. <laughs> I was I was That's, crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you play Kenya? Yes. <laughs> I'm assuming did I you play there twice. 1987 ah, okay. for all Africa games. Yeah. And 1983 for Afro basket. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, hopefully uh, Cote d'Ivoire versus Kenya in uh, August for Afrobasket. Yeah. I would love you guys. <laughs> so you were you were explaining to us the, the, the mood after this mm. after this um, this great finish. I think um, you know qualifying and then beating uh, a team like Angola. Um, yes, they are eleven time Afrobasket champions, and they're not what. They to be they're rebuilding at the moment yeah. um but they're 83 ranks higher than us on the FIBA ranking uh no one thought we were going to win that game and um we felt we we kind of all woke up the morning of that game feeling very confident um as you know as a player sometimes you wake up and you're just like we're gonna win yes you know yes you just have that feeling um yes. and so we very much felt that. And I think even when we were down by 15 points at, you know, in the second quarter, we were down by a lot. We weren't playing very well, but we had this deep sense of uh, self-belief that we could do it. And um, I think, you know, when Tyler hit that shot and we all ran on court, uh, we were all very excited and happy to get the win. Wow. Wow. So now has Kenya is qualified. What will be the goal to the, to the Afro basket? Look, this, as I said, it's been 28 years since Kenya has competed in Afro basket. Um, so we need to be very um, 
realistic about what our goals are. Um, you know, sure, what, winning Afro Basket one day would be great, but we need to, you know, step back and go, this will be our first experience in a long time, first experience for any of these players. Mm -hmm. And so we want to go to Afro Basket, gain as much experience. We want to play the best teams. We want Tunisia. We want Senegal. Um, we want maybe maybe not Nigeria. <laughs> Why? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but but we want to play those top teams so we know where we measure and what maybe Cote d'Ivoire. Mm, I wouldn't. I'm not putting them in the top five yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we we want to play teams like that so that we can, we where where we stand. Um, it's going to be great experience for us leading into the World Cup African qualifiers later this year. Yeah. Um, being the first female men's national team in Africa, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds very great. So now what uh, we have to expect from you and from your team in Kigali? Well, actually, if you, everybody always says in Africa, but of the 168 men's national teams ranked by FIBA, Kenya is the only one to have a female head coach. So it's around the world. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad that it's an African team leading the way because you and I both know that people have this backward look on Africa. Yeah. But where, where else would I have been given this opportunity? So I think it's really important to highlight that. Um, So for us and uh, for me personally, I'm looking at Afro Basket as a tournament to break ground in terms of female coaching and um, shining a spotlight on gender equality in coaching, but sport as a whole. Um, and hopefully I can inspire other, you know, girls, boys, young women to dream about being a coach and dream about coaching whatever team they want. Um, and we take gender out of the equation and you're just a good coach. You're not a male or a female coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, want, I, I just want to ask a question right now. Um, what is mm -hmm. Coach Liz Mills playing trademark? Oh, my trademark. I think preparation. Uh, for me, uh, I also think I'm one of the few coaches uh, who work in Africa who have who knows what's happening all across the board like I, i'm not coaching you know tunisia or you know cameroon or rwanda but i know what's going on i know the players i know the coaches um i know what the federations are doing so that being kind of like an expert in african men's basketball gives me that advantage and i i like to prepare very well for these tournaments like as you see my advanced stats which I share as much as I can, but keep some of that to myself. Um, and a deep understanding of the styles and players who, who all compete in Africa. Um, so that would be my trademark as a coach. Uh, you don't want to give us some secret, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, the intel stays with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if I say coach Liz Mills, is an Australian citizen with an African her. Am I wrong? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would have an African passport. That would make traveling very easy. Um, so that's what I'm on the lookout. I need an African Union passport would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, but Africa has definitely been home away from home for me. I feel very comfortable there. I've got great friends there as well. Um, so whenever I fly back, I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good. I heard that one of your plans is to mm -hmm. lead a man's African team, maybe to the Olympics or World Cup. How Definitely. do you want to make this dream come, this dream come true? Well, look, um, obviously the first commitment I have is to Kenya at the moment, and I want to work with them for as long as possible. As you know, in Africa, there's no real long-term contracts with, you know, federations. That's just how it is. Not easy. Um, and so I, I want to gain, and I've worked with Rwanda, I've worked with Cameroon, Zambia, I've, I've guest coached in Namibia, South Africa, Kenya as well. So I want to experience as many countries in Africa as I can and 
hopefully, you know, as we swing around to a World Cup or to an Olympics, I'm with an African team who's working towards those goals. Uh, I wish you, I wish you <laughs> to be uh, the first female coach in the world to lead mm -hmm. an African men's team to the Olympics or World Cup. <laughs> Same here. I think I think it not only is it a personal goal, but I think for female coaches, that would be huge to see. Uh, and even if it's not me, it would be huge to see a woman coaching a men's team at such a major tournament um, like the Olympics or the World Cup. It would be groundbreaking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I want to... Let you have the last words. What do you want to say to hand this interview? I think, um, I hope everybody gets excited about AfroBasket. I think this is going to be one of the most competitive AfroBaskets in the history of the tournament. As you know, we've got NBA caliber players, EuroLeague players. All these guys are now coming back to play. And I hope everybody gets behind their team and is really supportive. And for the Kenyans out there, I hope we make you proud. We promise to be competitive. We're not going just to participate. And hopefully we can cause some upsets. Uh, Coach Liz Mills, we want to really, really thank you for accepting to speak a little bit with us. And I want to wish you all the best for the future. Well, thank you very much. And I love this show. Anything that's promoting African basketball is great. So keep doing what you're doing. It's a kind of giving back to me. Oh, 100%. I, I receive, love it. I receive everything from African basket. It's a kind of giving back. Mm, exactly. I love it. So, you know, I'm happy to, to come back anytime. Yes. And see you in Afro basket. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye, coach. Take care. Recording done. Yes. <laughs> And so, uh, so you you'll be at Afro Basket. Yeah, I'll be there uh, with uh, Coach Ivoire or um, just as an individual.